All right, how's it going, everybody? This is Trainer Connor here, and that was kind of weird there. But okay, Sun and Moon—they're coming out this week. I'm really excited for these games to come out. Of course, these new games, November 18th, this Friday, this freaking Friday, they're coming out. I'm really excited. Me and Ruins Ray are going to have a nice party in the city. And we're going to have some real fun battles once we complete the games and whatnot. But, to wrap it all up here, we're going to finish off Ross with one more battle versus my good friend Stephanie. You look at this team. I'm using Zorark, I'm using Cobalion, Magmar. As opposed to Magmortar, of course, because, you know, Magmar is the pre-evolved form of Magmortar. I haven't really used a Magmar in, like, forever, so that's why I'm bringing him. Along with those guys, of course, we've got Clefable and uh, Zapdos. I believe this particular Zapdos is the shiny one that I got from my giveaway, in addition to the Samurott as well, which is also shiny. My opponent, Stephanie, here... Man, she's been feeling really sick as of late. So if you go on her Twitter page and say, Hey, feel better soon, because she's been feeling under the weather these past few days. I felt like challenging her to a battle and making her feel a lot better. So yeah, this is going to be a great battle. And this was a great match. So she's got a Cofagrigus. She's got Sylveon. Pikachu. Blastoise, Superior, and Garchomp. Potentially two Vegas on her team uh, with Blastoise and Garchomp, but in reality, I don't really care. I've got answers for these Pokemon. So, hope you guys enjoyed the last Wi-Fi battle of Oros. We're ready to go here, and then Sun and Moon, I might not post any content next week because I'll be out of town, but I will be posting a lot of Wi-Fi battles in Sun and Moon, nevertheless. Okay, so we're going to start with Zoroark in disguise as Cobalion here. Go for Swords Dance. It's really hard to use Zoroark, especially when it has Sucker Punch. Um, I could have used it right there, but... You know, it's really hard to predict what she's going to do with Cofagrigus. So I end up setting up another Swords Dance here. So I'm at plus four. I go for the Sucker Punch by Fail, of course. And she shows me Toxic. So that's a little bit unfortunate. But then we have a Lumberry to save us. But it's like, whatever. Because she outspeed me because of Trick Room. And she's going to poison me once again. And we're going to go for U-turn here, because cause it's like, I can't use um, Sucker Punch. It's way too obvious. I don't have Night Slash. My other Zoroark has it. So we U-turn now, and we go into Loviera, the Clefable. And um, this particular Clefable has Flamethrower as a coverage option to hit those fairy types, or steel types, rather. Uh, yeah. So, and speaking of fairy types, we have Sylveon versus Crefable. So we got two fairy types on the field. So yes, I do carry Flamethrower for the steel types. Unfortunately, she does not have a steel type, but she does have Superior. So I have to keep that in mind. We're going to get into this kind of weird skull war, where it's like both Crefable and Sylveon... We go for Wish, and, uh, well, she goes for Protect multiple times, but I'm going to go for a couple of Calm Minds to boost up my Special Attack and my Special Defense. The reality of this is, like, well, we're going to see who's going to win, because, you know, these are our two top defensive Pokemon, it looks like. So whoever goes down... Someone is going to get all the momentum. So we hope that we get all the momentum. Because if we can't, then oh well. That's going to be a little unfortunate. At plus two, you see that Sylveon is still able to take that blow. That is really impressive. You do not want to wish 
a, an opportunity for this thing to wish up, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, what I'm saying is that Sylveon, you cannot sleep on it. It's really good on the special defense. We all know this. I mean, ever since it came out in the S and Y, I really miss the, uh, when we had the, uh, the pre-release of X and Y. That was a fun day. And we got to experience 6th Gen together. And it kind of got my channel to a high peak there. But, uh, you know, I really enjoyed 6th Gen because it was really simple. The rules were, you know, you can follow them. You can, like, make up your own rules if you want to. Anyway, so we're moving on here to the match. We switched out to Gobelian. Felt like it was a good time to bring it in here. We're going to set up our Stealth Rocks here for the final time until Sun and Moon comes out. And, uh, she wishes up again, which is fine. Because we're going to go for Iron Hag if she wants to switch out into Garchomp or her Blastoise. I've got coverage for those guys. I've got, you know, close combat and uh, Volt Switch. We barely miss on the KO there, which is unfortunate because, like, Iron Hag should be stronger, but it is not. Sylveon is still bulky. She goes for another Paquette, and you're like, well, what are you trying to accomplish here? You're trying to take care of Sylveon, and yes, I am. I've got the tools right here with Cobalion and uh, Loviera, the Clefable. We're trying to force her out, and uh, we do, finally. She goes into Cofagrigus, which is fine by me. I want some more damage onto this thing. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be great because I can switch out. I do get the mummy on my side here. Of course, mummy, you know, is the ability for Cofagrigus. Gets very really good for my justified boost. That's fine. I mean, it's not going to matter in the long run. Here, we're going to go for a Volt Switch, and we're going to go back into Lavira because that's going to work out. She goes for another Trick Room. It might benefit me a little bit later, but we'll see for sure, right? Now, I figured I could stay in here and just go for the uh, Moon Blast and not set up again, uh, because I know from experience, Cofagrigus has not really good special defense, and we see that here as a Moonblast is able to take out Cofagrigus. Unfortunately, guys, since I let uh, the Cofagrigus set up the Trick Room, my opponent here, Stephanie, she's going to be using her Mega Blastoise in Trick Room. That is a little bit unfortunate, but we do see that I'm faster because, you know, Clefable is uh, faster than Mega Blastoise, so you reverse that in Trick Room. That's pretty awesome. But she gets the confusion off the water pulse. I'm like, ugh, that's a little unfortunate. So I switch out, not wanting to take the risk, but we get a double switch. I'm not sure why she did that. She could have stayed in there and she could have just hit me real hard again, but that's neither here nor there. I get the better end of this deal on the switch in the Cobalion because I can just stay in and try to hit her with an iron head as we, ah, oh, we got ourselves figured out here. We're not Cobalion. We're Destiny the Zoroark in disguise. I fooled you guys. Okay, so we're definitely going to Cobalion. It worked out until she, you know, went for the hyper voice. She was very good at predicting that, it looked like. But yes, we're, we're officially here with Cobalion. We have the Iron Hag ready to go. But she goes for another Protect, hoping to survive another Iron Hag. But I apparently get max damage as it wasn't a crit. And we take out Sylveon. So that is really awesome. I'm really happy I got rid of that thing because it was really annoying at the beginning of this battle. Now she goes into uh, her Mega Blastoise and the Trick Room wears off, which means I will outspeed Mega Blastoise. Hit him with a close combat. So that's two kills for Cobalion. 
That is definitely awesome there. Now she does go into Garchomp. I know it's not going to go Mega. It could be Scarfed, but we find out that we have Speed, so it's most likely Lumberry or a Life Orb set. I want more damage onto this thing so I can revenge kill my other Pokemon. So thank you, Cobalion, for taking care of the Sylveon and the uh, Mega Blastus. I forgot for a second. Anyway, so we're going to go with Samurott here. Knowing that I have a Focus Sash intact, I can definitely take a hit and then retaliate back with an Ice Beam. So, yes, there we go. We got rid of this Garchomp. It could have been a threat to my team. If it was Scarfed, yes, it would definitely be a threat. But it wasn't Scarfed. This thing, though, Superior might be Scarfed. And that is a huge problem because Scarfed Superior with the ability Contrary, which raises the special attack, that's going to be a huge threat. But I do have an answer for this thing with Magmar. Of course, Magmar resists this blow and at plus two, that's a lot of damage. Fortunately, I'm going to take this and go with a Fire Blast. I had such crappy luck with Fire Blast. I gotta say, I had a match where it all came down to me and Magmar versus a Glaceon. I missed two freaking Fire Blasts in a row. And that kind of costed me the match. So, I'm not really relying on Magmar too much, but I had to at the end. So we do lose Magmar with Pikachu out there, but I had my uh, Zapdos ready to go to outspeed this Pikachu and hit him with a Heat Wave. In addition, I had Clefable with 63 HP left. So that was a great battle. I won that 6-4 or 2-0 if you want to go by, by that way. And um, that's going to wrap up Ross. For real, guys. We're done. We're done with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Next up, our new journey in Lola, the Sun and Moon player game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed my run and my Ross Wi Fi battles, and look out for more Wi Fi battles in the Sun and Moon. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Alright, goodbye, guys.